I think it's has already been mentioned, and obviously um, our parks are one of our great assets within the borough, and as a public health team, and working with officers across the council around the pledges, they were absolutely around celebrating the, the assets that they have within our borough. And of course, access to open space and uh, being outside is good for people's health and, and well-being, whether you're a young child or an older person. Uh, yes, it's, um, I think we get accused occasionally of all living in a silo mentality. Do we? I'm just wondering what impact will these charges have on people taking part in the health walk program? Uh, and how much consultation have you actually had with organisers and conversely with the parks and gardens people to see what that impact would be? Because I don't think we've taken full account of the impact of these nominal charges on the people who would benefit from it. And that is personally a great concern. We haven't had a, a great deal of um, uh, connection with this particular um, proposal or policy, but we will be working with the, um, with the department to evaluate the impact of the uh, introduction of the charges, um, because yes, we need to ensure that people are accessing various initiatives we've uh, got taking place in the borough to improve, improve their health. I think the concern is, briefly, Chair, that we weren't consulted before these charges were imposed. It would be better if your views had been able to be taken into account before decisions of this major nature were taken. And what you're saying is that didn't actually happen. So we're really doing it now. If there's any consultation going on, it's going to be an after the horse is posted before the public meeting. My understanding is I wasn't party to that consultation. I'm the only my brother meetings and, and being part of that conversation, but I wasn't. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Um, I was gratified to hear what you said in your opening comments about well-being and health and open spaces adding value to that, and I think that's both anecdotally from yourself, but it's obviously a given. I'm just wondering, at what point did you make representations to the highways authorities in order to, to sort of overturn this decision, because obviously it supports your own department. Could you just let us know, I'm sure you did, at what, what point you, you made representation to the Highway Authority? My understanding is that we haven't made any representation to the Highway Authority. Okay, thank you. Can I, I'll just, before I bring you in, Dave, just as on from what um, David said there, so, you haven't made rep your department hasn't made representation, Julie. No. So do I take that as a fact then that you don't think the the impact is going to be serious enough to because if you if your department you, you must have known about what the what we were planning here because we this has been coming backwards and forwards to this committee and we've talked about this introducing charges like this over the last two, three years within this council. So is it right in saying that if your department was so concerned about the impact it was going to have on public health per se, that you would have made representation? I suppose uh, we, wouldn't, we haven't made formal representation. We will have had informal conversations with the officers around the introduction of this policy. But I suppose the policy was about whether or not the monetary charge. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't, we haven't made a formal response, I suppose, to be honest. Yeah, we've got a response to it. Dave, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. It, it's on the same line, but I'm not going to accuse you of anything or anything else, but the amount of work that's done in mental health at the moment is one of the most important issues that we need to address. And of course, all ages, and it's a big, big item. You know, I noticed uh, the report going to Cabinet on Monday. It's a very limited amount of money that's actually being proposed for, for mental health. Given, given the great work that's being done in, in Brotherton Park and Eastern in the area uh, where I represent, for those people with those sort of illnesses, do you think this will have a, a negative effect on, on the work that's being done in relation to that? It's very difficult for me to say because I think until the policy is introduced, it's very hard to know what the impact will be. We can model, and I'm sure that's what Mark and his team have done. 
uh, what may happen, but I don't think we've got the evidence to say this will definitely happen. Um, but I think if, it, if and when this is introduced, that's definitely, we definitely need to have a look at what the impact is of the policy. Thanks, Jim. Julie, how much, since 2010, how much has your department lost in, in, in the cuts? Because I know the demands on your budget, everybody wants it, because you look at our 20 pledges, which has been mentioned tonight by committee members, everybody's after it, because I was it a few years ago, I, and it was a very tenuous um, thing I was after, but, and I was told then that the strain on your budget how much, how much has your, has your department lost since 2010? I'm sorry, I'd have to come back to your chair on that. I mean, there's a paper gone to cabinet just recently about we're spending 20 million on our commissioning intentions. So I think our budget at the moment is around about, no, I, I, I'm guessing. So can I come back to figures and let you know? Is it, is it fair to say that you've lost quite a bit of the budget since 2010? Would that be fair? Which, and what I'm guessing to you is, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to get to is, that is it fair to say that the cuts on, on, on your department's budget has had, a, has had an impact on people's public health per se? I think what I can say is that our budget has reduced since we transferred to the council in 2013, but I'd have to come back to you definitely. Could you, could you yeah. do that, please? And as well as being chair of this committee, I am a member of the committee as well. Thanks, you. Any further questions for Julie? Not Thank you. Thanks, Julie. I'd now like to call Councillor Phil Gilchrist, please, who's the uh, Ward Councillor for East. to look at all those. Bit of history. Since the 1840s, Wirral's Reeston has been one of those places called the Richmond on the Mersey. We had right through the 19th century a tradition of ferry boats coming from Liverpool bringing visitors and that persisted right till the 1920s. And then there was a bit of a decline. And in the 1960s, Berkshire Council looked at Easton and said this deserves to be a country park. It was one of the first created in the country. Um, some respects were fortunate the decline because in the 1840s the area was going to be parceled up into big mansions for people to be merchants and live there, but all that failed. So we were left with eastern woods and we were left with what people come to see. We've got um, public health, and Chair is busy chatting to Mike, but I'll continue. People come to see the squirrels. And people can see the wildlife and the birds. There's so much pressure on parts of the country park, especially around the League of Human Sports field, that the wardens and the rangers there are concerned that the blue medals are getting trampled on because people are parking in that area and uh, perhaps not following the paths. But in the photographs I sent you, I sent you a count I carried out last weekend of the number of cars and motorcycles in the car park. There's a main car park opposite uh, the visitor centre, not far from the Mimosa Tea Rooms. The parking areas from the mini roundabout round and alongside the river leading up Ferry Road, there's a parking area in front of the Ferry Hotel. And if any member goes down any weekend, like last weekend, there's a range of motorcycles and cars throughout this whole area. And I stress again, there were a few spaces left in the main car park. But I want members to put themselves in the position of a visitor, coming to the area, <coughs> driving round the mini roundabout, past the tap hotel, up the hill into the car park. Some will perhaps see a sign saying, car park charges here. And human nature being what it is, some may decide to turn round and back out and go around the mini roundabout and find somewhere else to park. 
That's human nature. When I go to an Andidna occasionally, uh, we avoid parking on the frontage, we tend to leave that for the disabled, the people who can't walk far, and human nature go and find a side street somewhere where we might park reasonably. And that's what we all do. And there are charges there, there are charges at Bristat and in other places we go to. And we wonder, are we in the same league? Are we really a local amenity which does bring people in from outside as well? In my comments on the parking, I drew attention to the risk of parking extending up Ferry Road, up that narrow road, up the hill, from the mini roundabout, on one side, because you can't risk parking on both sides. And I showed you photographs of the line of cars. And uh, last weekend, as you have seen from the figures, I, I saw the 26 cars in front of the Ferry Hotel, which is an area currently free, but under private control where the impact of charging on the council's car parks might flow into that. I uh, indicated, of course, just how busy the area is. And an issue has been raised during our consideration today about the country parks and their finances. I've never seen a breakdown holding account, a figure for what's spent on the parks. Now, I'd like to know what arrangements officers visit envisage for this revenue. Are we going to put the money from the parking into a holding account and assign it specifically to the parks so the public can see where this money is actually going to go? Or is it going to disappear and be spread around? I want to also talk about the issue of this money because I've mentioned just how busy the place is. And I wouldn't, thank you, wouldn't want them to think, hey, we're in the money here, we're going to get lots of money in. But my belief is that there's a risk of damage to local businesses, there's a displacement of parking, we might end up with unsightly yellow lines because of the previous call in and monitoring as we mentioned today. Officers might, there might be enough staff to see what the impact is, we might then consider putting yellow lines in the area. Funny enough, every time I raise yellow lines with engineers, they say, well, no, we don't like them because it speeds the traffic up. So there seems to be a conflict in engineering opinion here, which I'd like the committee to explore. Finally, uh, we heard a comment from the gallery about it's about our lives. It is. It's about the livelihoods of the businesses operating in that area that serve that community and all the visitors. And I ask members to look at those issues in more detail. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. down the road from the um, inspirations, you know what I mean, where the cycle track is. Is that being affected? And also, um, can you tell me if you've, you've made reference to the state of the roads as well, just explain a little bit more about, about the roads going down on the roof. Well, there are several car parks in the area. The one that council must perhaps first refer to is off the Hall Road that leads from Warren Lane to the Leverick Hume sports field where there are tennis courts and the rugby pitches. That doesn't have charges on and I don't believe it's subject to the present proposals. There is a concern that some of the people who may park in the charge of the parks might be diverted to the Leverick Hume playing field and put pressure on that end of the park. The parking proposals that I believe the committee is considering are for what's called the main car park, as the visit centre, but also what I call the coastal park, coastal path, which provides views over the river, where I saw 18 cars on Sunday. Those views over the river are also on the river side, separated by a metal railing. And it is a popular location there, but because the trees are well established, it's also rather gloomy. But there will be some displacement, I believe, from those two places into the busiest streets. Council Bus Park directly refers to the condition of Ferry Road. I believe I sent you photographs of the um, 
traffic calming red surfaces, which are now out of use, dis disfavoured by the council, where they're breaking up. My ward colleagues and I have sent many photographs of the area between the golf club and the country park, where the surface is very poor. We've had a debate with officers about what is an actual defect, but the defects keep appearing. Uh, and finally, Ferry Road itself was subject to a local safety scheme, and the markings for that are now rather worn and faded. Can I just say we're here to discuss the car parking charges, not the state of the roads. That will come at another day. Yeah, it's, it's just because people will be parking there, and I just, and, and Councillor Hill just made yeah. reference to it in his paperwork, and I wanted to know where it might be in. Can I ask you a second question then? I've been approached by a number of people who live on the new houses, as we call them, um, down Ferry Road, the new estate, because of the side entrance into the park. They're very concerned that people will be parking on that estate, which is quite narrow roads anyway for such big houses. Most people having two or three cars of their own. Have you been approached as well by? I haven't had direct approaches about that. I did observe on this week that there was one car parked on the footway, which is accessed by the dropped curbs at the entrance to Tor Drive. It is possible that some people will park in Tor Drive. There is a section that is probably 50 yards long from the bends on the estate leading towards Valley Road, looking out across the river. It is conceivable some people will park there. We might have a request for your lives. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Phil. And um, thanks for the, the photographs. The, the, the photographs illustrate uh, on sunny weekend how many visitors look at this area on track. If the proposals um, were instigated and people did um, prefer to park outside the area, as you said, and due to restrictions that were displaced, is there anywhere in that area on that side of the A41 that the vehicles could be displaced to? Well, my belief, Chair, is that Ferry Road is a long, narrow road that runs from the area of the QE2 down towards the river. The, if parking is forced, what I call, up Ferry Road, up the hill towards Eastern Village, there's a limit uh, there because the residents live there and don't have parking spaces outside. Some of the properties there is about eight with no frontage parking, and uh, they will probably have some disagreements with the intended visitors. Uh, there is a private road over by the Ship Canal that runs down to the docks. I don't think they'll be very happy if some park there. Um, but I do believe there's a problem of displacement. Officers say there's a figure mentioned about displacement. It might be displacement of equal or displacement of numbers. The report to the committee in March talks about having taken account of displacement of tissues. Uh, but strangely enough, in those bullet points, it's also said the commercial viability of businesses was not a material consideration. So I can't talk about road condition, and I can't particularly talk about the businesses, but what I do envisage are what Council Elton called the unintended consequences of some of the actions, which will be parking, but also an impact on businesses. Charges at the bottom of the car park will actually 
disseminate the vehicles all the way over there and cause major traffic problems? I do envisage part of the problem of parking has will not be helped by the withdrawal of the local bus service in April. The bus to East and Ferry will be withdrawn, and there are proposals to withdraw further services, which comments is being made on. The area that Council Mitchell describes was just outside the local safety scheme and runs down a hill towards Country Park. If there's a long line of cars, that road is narrow, it is difficult for cars to pass each other. I was there this weekend when there were temporary traffic lights to repairs to a wall adjacent to the Country Park. They succeeded in stopping traffic and making breaks in the traffic. But I do envisage situations in which People coming up from the country park, having had a good day out, then have to navigate very carefully up that hill, meeting traffic coming the other way. And I think there's scope for conflict there. I don't wish to see the area of coding yellow lines or waiting restrictions, but inevitably requests for these things arise. I don't believe the businesses down by the tap of the Federal Hotel will want to have yellow lines all over the place to have free flow, free flow of traffic. But I think we're back to looking at situations that may arise, which people say may be addressed if we do a bit more work on them in the future. But we will have created a problem and perhaps knowingly or unknowingly created a problem because we haven't. And we have the engineers to do all these traffic counts and do all that work now because we've lost so many staff because of austerity. So there are a few people at the Let's say ground zero, the, the sharp end of engineers to do all this work because the council has a, perhaps a top heavy management structure. And that's another subject for debate. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 My wife would lynch me if I went out on a Saturday afternoon because that's family time. So it was a, they were taken on Sundays. Yeah. It was a taken, the reason I ask is because Saturday was nice and sunny and Sunday was very miserable and dull. So that's the reason. Oh, I'm, I'm leaving on. You said oh, it was in the car park. I gave the dates I took them in. in so it was Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. I don't believe Saturday. It was Sunday, which was a bit dull and miserable on Sunday. Sure, the same time. But anyway, the car park where you counted 18 cars. Yes. How many spaces were there? I think there were about. I mean, the 18 cars means nothing. There could have been no, a lot of right. spaces. Thank you, Chair. Quite happy. I'm sure somebody has a plan somewhere. But I think there are about eight vacant spaces. I alluded to the fact that the amount of vegetation means that. Unless you really want to park there and you found one of the spots where the trees have been removed, you don't enjoy the panoramic views that you once enjoyed. Now, I think there are about eight spaces that stand to correction. I think they're all better, Chair. It's the 18. The 18 were yes, occupied. Yes, of course. Wimbledon. Yes. Wimbledon men's fan was on there as well. Yes, of course. Um, so, is this, this car park with the 18 cars in? Yes. Is that one that we're intending? To put a the order, as I understand it, Trees Chair, consists, consists of the big car park with 60 odd and the coastal park that has perhaps 20 or 26 in, I think, and therefore it applies to both. Because the, the, on the aerial photograph of the uh, notices the council published, you had a ring round one and an elliptical ring round the other, because it's very difficult for officers to measure in the number of metres how far it up would be. Well, that was less meaningful, but if you picture them from the air, you could see where it was intended. Because there are no real measuring points. You could say, oh, 350 metres towards Job's Ferry. Well, those of us who know where Job's Ferry is would get that. But I'm not sure somebody reading an advert, they have yeah, notice in the globe, would. Because one of the We've talked about unintended consequences here, and, and, and it's a lot. It's all what we're doing here today is all full of ifs, buts, and maybes. But one of the unintended consequences, or intended consequences, of introducing car parking charges is that it frees up car parking spaces, and it it it, it helps with the flow of traffic as well. Because some people, no, no, absolutely. People, please, members of the public, you might agree or disagree with what I'm saying. Um, but please, um, 
so that all members around this table can hear what I'm saying, whether they agree or disagree. Um, and Phil, who's, who's going to answer my question. Oh, yes. Um, so, yeah, so one of the consequences, intended or unintended, could be that it, it frees up car parking spaces. It also makes people more aware of how long they're going to park for because there's a charge. And that would then help with the flow of traffic up and down the narrow lanes that you've eloquently described. In the future, I can understand there might be some spaces freed up because people are more reluctant to go with them. That might give space for some people coming in to fit within them. I'd like people to enjoy their time at the country park, not sit there looking at their watch every few minutes to see how is my time, quite yeah. frankly. Uh, so if we've got the, the stage payments of 50 billion pounds and so on, uh, like you, if I hear the director ask you about that, and I parked in my car park there, and my wife said, how long have you paid for? So I said, well, I've paid for about an hour or whatever it was, and I can get that bit back off my as the ticket. Such considerations don't <laughs> Oh, yeah. Except for people watching the clock, thinking, am I within my time? Have the kids got another 20 minutes to walk further into the woods, see the squirrels, listen to the birds? Are we going to get back to the car in time? I don't, believe, I don't want people to be facing that, frankly, Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Timothy. Thank you. Thank you.
Over the last four years, Arrow Park Golf Club has increased its membership by 50%. We take pride in our course and we take pride in promoting Arrow Park to visitors far and wide. We stand to lose 10 to 20% of our members if these parking charges are implemented. I'd just like to know, will there be any concessions for golfers? If there is, then surely that defeats the point of the object in raising income and then giving it back. Number five, money, a significant amount of money has been invested in promoting foot golf at Arrow Park on the pitch and foot course, which will all go to waste once the parking charges are implemented. I'd like to know what proposals, if any, have been put forward to entice people to use these facilities if these parking charges are implemented. Number six, it was suggested by the council officers, council officers on the 24th of January this year that there would be a 30% reduction of use in the country parks if car parking charges were implemented. With this in mind, I have noted the income received in 2016 at Arrow Park Golf Course and the proposed impact these charges would have on the income received by Ruddleborough Council in 2017. 2016, the Gold Green fee income was two, in excess of £240,000. In 2016, the Foot Golf income was in excess of £90,000. In total, income was £330,000. I have noted that basically, if you propose the 2000 income loss based on a 30% reduction, would be a total of £99,000, and that's not taken into account any proposed parking fees you wish to generate will be lost. I have noted that to reclaim the suggested £99,000, a fee of 140 cars per day look after this Arrow Park, which, considering the golf course has been closed for the last three weeks, that was, this was in March this year, would be, definitely not be achievable, as there are only 227 parking spaces available in the first place, and I cannot understand the commercial centre within the decision making process. Am I not the only person who can see that the risk of losing in excess of 99,000 is a risk too far? And the well over your time. I just got it up, please. Yeah, of course, sorry. Plans to implement car park charges in Bitmer Park were recently reversed, mainly to protect future external investments. So make the right decision, protect the futures of our country parks, and stop playing party politics with the lives of the local people. I appreciate the coach council experience in interesting times but there are more, more proportionate ways in which these challenges can be addressed. If re revenue has to be increased, then this should be shared by everyone, not just a minority. If cuts have to be made, then cut out the waste of not essential services. I would like to thank you for your time and hope you reconsider any planting car park charges at our country park as a matter of urgency. Thank you. Because the 99,000 potential loss 
as the figures that you proposed would be counter to what the revenue that we had earlier on that would be actually made uh, car parts you know, 15,000 a year that's quite a few years you're not going to make any money at all it's a waste of time can I just respond to that, please? Yes. Can I just like to say the... I'd like to sort of uh, praise the department that's responsible for the upkeep of our park golf course at this present time. Um, in the last, I'd say, 12 to 18 months, there's been significant changes in, in trying to update the golf course. Significant changes. And it's resulted in people actually being attracted to the golf course and playing and basically bringing more money into the, golf, into the golf course. Car parking charges are just going to work those out. All that hard work, all that you know, basically money that's been spent wisely, which I think it has been spent wisely, which just be lost. Did I hear you correctly say that if this was to be implemented, Arrow would be the only municipal golf club in the country to charge? I believe so. I spoke with uh, Steve Foster, who's the uh, Cheshire Union Golf Clubs. I asked him for if there was anything, if there's another golf course in the, in the area, in the country that he could think of, he couldn't think of any. Okay. My only concern is that they might, uh, if once it's implemented at a park, it may well be implemented at other golf courses, Brack Mud, or Lake Municipal, that type of thing. That's my concern. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you for coming today. Thank you. I'd now like to call Jane Smith, please, from Arrow Park. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Can I also remind you about the five minutes?
to the older members and also to ladies who have lost their husbands or partners. Most people take up golf, or most ladies take up golf, when they either retire or semi-retire. So a large majority of our members are on fixed pensions, and in times of recession and increasing costs, every penny counts. Introducing car parking charges would have a major effect on our golf club, in that one, we would struggle to keep our membership numbers, two, we would lose our matches with other rural clubs, Three, we would find it near on impossible to form a committee due to the amount of time that needs to be spent at the club. And last but not least, we would lose our elder members who have been loyal to both club and council for years and have brought through the next generation of golfers with their wisdom, expertise, patience and kindness. At our own, we justifiably feel unhappy and penalised by these proposed charges as we are the only municipal clause to be affected. All playing members already pay for some type of contract which costs upwards in the region of £400. My own year as captain six years ago because I was not of a certain age cost £550, which was not far short of what I would have had to pay to be a private member at a different golf club. Governments and health professionals strongly encourage us to be more active due to our ongoing epidemic of diabetes in all age groups. Golf is the perfect way of enjoying the sport, making new and lifelong friends, being active in older age. One of our members sitting next to me today, Mrs Valerie Hampson, is 84 and still plays a mean full 18 holes of golf. <coughs> is part of our big golfing community. We would ask you to please review these parking charges. We have been loyal to you over many years. Surely it must be a two-way street.